Hello everybody, Bentley Campus Guy Christy here again. And what you're looking at in front of you is one of my breathable bucket worm bins. I'm sure some of you have been wondering whatever became of my breathable bucket systems. I made a video and a blog post, a couple blog posts probably, or maybe two or three, about my systems earlier, you know, back in the fall and maybe early winter, but I haven't really provided much in the way of updates, and I don't think I've updated at all in 2020. The bottom line is that I absolutely love these systems. They have been doing very, very well. Um, the one thing is they're down in my basement, and my basement is quite cool during the winter. So I wouldn't say that I'm seeing the sort of maximum potential uh, of these systems. But what has blown me away is this breathable aspect of these buckets. Normally, as I've said in another video, uh, I don't like buckets at all as worm bins. They have a very low surface area to volume ratio. Um, they, they get very, very wet and swampy down the bottom. They don't really work well. The air just can't get down there. But these vents, these bottle top vents, oh, I'm sure I'll provide a link to some of the other videos and blog posts and whatnot uh, if you want to learn more about them. Very, very simple, very easy. I'm not a do-it-yourselfer kind of guy, but they're very, very easy to make and install, and they work incredibly well. Very, very well, much better than your typical kind of drill holes. Now, what's funny is you can see this uh, cloth lid up here secured by an elastic. I really love that as well. But the funny thing is the combination of that plus those actually resulted in a system that had too much airflow. It was actually kind of drying out uh, and it's underperforming because of that. So what I did, whoa, you can see that dust. This has been downstairs getting all dusty in the basement. Look at this, uh, look at this guy right here. This is a potato peel. So this right here is a good indication of, oh, it's a uh, sweet potato. It's a good indication, other than the fun of growing things, it's a good indication of why it's not a bad idea to freeze and then thaw food waste, especially any kind of uh, tuber, Anything that goes in the ground and is designed to resist microbial attack, like potatoes and carrots and all these sorts of things, it's, it's going to, you know, it's not going to break down necessarily all that quickly. And you might see something kind of cool like this. Now, this is a very nice little plant. I almost tempted to, to plant it. Anyway, so what I wanted to show you was the fact that I put this bag in here now. So this little bag is something that's going to help to keep the moisture in while there's still really good airflow coming in and it's quite loose and it's i've kept bags like this on plastic worm bins um, just over the surface of plastic worm bins and, and they're great a great little way to keep in moisture but still support some airflow so you can see this particular one i didn't mention November 11th, one tiny tub. I hope to uh, make another video talking about my tiny tubs, um, what exactly that means. But basically, a small little tiny bin uh, that had 19 worms and more than 40 cocoons in it. And that was back in November. But you can see I have done some feeding. This has not just been sitting here since November. There's been some feeding for sure. But you can see this dark, nice stuff. And you can see just how far down that level is, even with some feeding. Obviously, you know, not everything is perfectly processed, and that's totally fine. But the overall impression I've been getting from these buckets is just a nice, rich earthiness. A, a really good composting process going on, even if the worm population hasn't been uh, going gangbusters because of the cool temperatures, you see a cocoon there. 
Um, now, what's funny is what I talked about in another recent video, my, no, maybe not my last video, but uh, in a blog post on the uh, Red Room Composting blog. I'm trying to do this one handed, of course. I have the awesome cinematography skills. Okay. But yeah, what I, what I was talking about on another blog post is that I've been finding these other worms. These, these smaller composting worms other than red worms. And for some reason, these are, these are worms that I have seen. Just one sec. Give me one sec here. Oh, it's black. The screen is black. All right. Sorry about that. And what you see at the bottom is what was my false bottom. And the false bottom doesn't need to be something that completely turns into compost. It's not a big deal. I mean, this is really, really nice stuff. This can always be used again. I love letting cardboard just kind of sit and decompose slowly over time. And this is a fantastic bedding. It's got microbes in it. It's sort of like a living living bedding. Like a living material, but not quite um, fantastic for putting in a system. So there's a red worm. And yeah, what's going on here? Nice, rich stuff. It's wet-ish down in the bottom, but by no means was there any kind of pooling in the bottom of this bucket, which is unheard of for a typical bucket system. There's some more worms. I'm just trying to see if I can see one of these other worms. I'm going to do a video uh, about these other worms. And there is one right there. That one in particular isn't a great specimen because it looks a lot like a red worm. But they're, uh, they're usually very obvious to me anyway um, as being something different. Their cocoons are very obvious. But the funny thing is they've really been going gangbusters in my bucket systems. And of course, when I make a video, it doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, this is all very, very earthy smelling. Um, I'm seeing lots of nice dark material. There's certainly lots that hasn't been processed yet, but I would say that a lot of that has to do with the temperatures. You know, down below 20 degrees Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit for sure, in the basement. And here's another example of what I was talking about earlier. Cabbage, little, oh, you see that? You see that little guy right there? That is a cocoon of one of these other worms. They're smaller, they're rounder, and they're quite yellow. But anyway, another one of these vegetables that is used to uh, resisting microbial attack and it just kind of grows if it's, if it's still alive. So that's one of the good reasons for actually uh, using a freezer to freeze and thaw, well, freeze anyway, your uh, food waste, and then you thaw them out and that tissue's killed. You don't have to worry about, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind these little things growing and everything else. It's fine by me. But, uh, you know, if you got a lot of cabbage waste, you got a lot of potato peels, things like that, they're going to take a long time to break down if you, uh, if you don't take some measures to, to, uh, to kill the plant tissue. So this is one of these worms. Again, it's not a perfect example it's a big one for these worms they're normally very very small but they have this sort of curved body appearance and uh, a lot of the time they're actually kind of they don't wiggle around a lot like they're, they're not really active the way the red worms are but for some reason um not this this one isn't a, a prime example but in at least one or two of my other buckets they've almost been taking over which is really really weird because I've seen them for a number of years now, and they've always just kind of seen like this little worm. 
that happen to be living in the uh, same systems as my redworms, but not really doing all that much. Anyway, just wanted to provide an update and uh, sing my praises for the breathable bucket systems. I highly, highly recommend you try some of these out for yourself. They don't take up a lot of floor space and they're fantastic in terms of aerobic vermicomposting. So that's it for me for now and we'll certainly be talking again soon. Once again, this is Bentley Compost Guy Christy and I hope you enjoyed the video.